It's Friday night in the A, and you know what that means. Kelly Price and Tori McElhaney coming at you on Rise Up Tonight. Presented by AT&T. Atlanta, it is a new season of Rise Up Tonight of Falcons football. And kind of like how we're seeing a lot of new faces in Falcons uniforms, I am beyond pumped to welcome a new beautiful face beside me in AtlantaFalcons.com beat reporter, Tori McElhaney. Tori, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And look at us. Who would have thought? Not me, not me. All right, well, let's huddle up, y'all. Of course, the biggest talker coming out of that exhibition opener was the quarterback play. And man, both Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter showing off their wheels. I think they got so excited that they forgot how to slide. I mean, it is the preseason after all, guys, sheesh. But then to see Desmond Ritter stay in there, get the chance to bounce back, lead a game-winning drive, and show his maturity and command of the offense, major props, in my opinion, to Arthur Smith for letting that all develop in a game scenario. No, I think you're absolutely right. We need to see Desmond Ritter in that scenario. We need to see him run a game, and that's exactly what we saw. So I think I completely agree with you. It's really good that we were able to see this because we're going to need to see it. And really important for his development, I think, going forward. So now it is time for joint practices in New York. Guys get so juiced up for this. We always hear about how chippy these practices get, him, Patriots and Panthers. It's funny because I talked to Brian Edwards this week about how the biggest thing he's worried about is really just protecting himself this week. But upping that competition ante is a good thing to see at this point, right? I will tell you this there is nothing I learn more about in terms of a team than I do at joint practices out of all the preseason training camp preseason games I learned so much about these teams at these practices they are so important as we get to week one of the season and it's important for this team to really learn about itself in these situations as well while the starting defense didn't get a ton of time to learn about itself against the Lions I think what we already know about this group is they're playing with a lot more confidence comfortability swagger if you will and I think we all see saw Dean Pease's in passion speech about changing this team's culture. What improvements did you see on that side of the ball in week one? I think it's something that we should talk about. I'm glad that you brought it up because Dean Pease talked about this a lot. He said, you know, that first drive wasn't what we wanted to see at all. But we came back to the sideline, we regrouped, and I think after that, they only gave up, I think, 3.1 yards per average at, for every running play. That was so important to see a defense go from giving up quite a bit of runs, <laughs> a lot, and then to come back and regroup. That was important. Yeah. And at this point, we've seen Drew Dahlman and Matt Hennessy rotated around at center. Arthur Smith said he's really looking for someone physical, but someone who has a solid command of the offense as the quarterback in front of that quarterback. That's a big battle to watch. And how's it kind of shaken out? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think this is going to go throughout all of the preseason. Yeah. I really think that Matt Hennessy and Drew Dahlman are neck and neck right now. This is as significant a position battle as you're going to see on this team. Yeah, you want to see that kind of shake out through the preseason and hopefully someone kind of takes a commanding spot there. Well, it is the new season, same drip, and this team don't quit when it comes to them. Falcons Fitz. Let's start with Michael Walker this week on Falcons Fitz. We love a tie-dye graphic tee moment for travel day. I'm a huge fan of the white kicks. The ripped jeans really kind of bring this together with the white kicks. And, of course, we've still got a few months of solid white jean season. I'm here for that, Tori. Um, here's the thing. I think he has many of those hats, those number three hats. I think I've seen him <laughs> around the facility, and, you know, I like the consistency. Get one thing in every color. I that think works. he I think he has it in like multiple colors because we've talked about this on Rise Up tonight. That's like a chance the rapper nod, but also he's number three. So mm -hmm. you'll have to see that. Next up, Kaderil Hodge with the classic Falcon standard issue team hoodie. And it is not so much the fit here that I love, but the vibe. It is giving very much first day of school vibes. Like he should be holding up one of those little chalkboard signs that says, I'm Kaderil Hodge. I'm 27 years old <laughs> and I'm going into my fifth season in the NFL. Look, this is the face of a guy who just wants to get on this plane to go play some football. <laughs> That's it. He doesn't want to do anything else. He's like, just get me there. I I'll go it. play. He, he's <laughs> absolutely cheesing. Next up, Geronimo Allison with an impressive amount of bags he is carrying in, in things that he's got going on here. Like, how many things can he get into this, you know, airplane without having to pay extra money? That is the same vibe that I'm carrying on when yeah. I carry on stuff, and I love to see the snacks as well. Uh, this, uh, that was going to be my point. The snacks, <laughs> the drinks, the bag, I mean, you're looking at a guy who is prepared for this flight. I know I always get hungry before I get on a plane. Yeah, I mean, you can't just rely on, you know, the little cookies. Absolutely. And the you got to bring your own veteran move there by Geronimo Allison. Finally, king of the good vibes, Frank Darby, who had not just one, but two solid trips for this Detroit, solid fits for this Detroit trip. People may not know this, but normally these guys pack just one outfit that they wear pregame and onto the plane. 
but nah. Our guy Frank said, let me flex on him with a beautiful ombre hoodie situation and skinny jeans and then the all white tracksuit. Love mm. that. Oh, that's the thing is I fly on these planes. You're only allowed to carry on. <laughs> so props to him for bringing not one but two good fits on this trip. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously utilizing packing cubes as we saw oh, you we love, do as well. We love, love packing, packing cubes. cubes. All right, well, Frank Darby always makes us smile, of course. And you know what else warms our hearts? Memes. And so we asked some of the guys what their favorite memes are for our question of the week. Uh, the frog. No, it's not the frog. It's a penguin. It's like he's just sitting on the stool. He like he's like, oh, he's got the cross arms, and he's like, no, I'm not gonna do it because you told me to. That's kind of me. So, <laughs> guessing the one that just came to mind off rip was the Nick Young one, huh? Oh, everybody, <laughs> that one. My favorite meme. What's a meme? <laughs> Come on, serious? Like memes, like on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I like gifts. It depends on my mood. I think I like the future sensational. Future like sensational. Uh, it's just like sensational. It's just sensational. <laughs> I would say the one I use the most is that it just Elba meme. Like where he's in the back of the car and he's like shaking his head. I don't know if you remember that one. I use that one the most because it's like, it's the one that's like, or how dare you ask me that, or something like that, or like, you know, just like appalled, basically. Yeah, so I like that one the most. Okay, a lot to unpack there. First oh of all, gosh. Lorenzo Carter doesn't even know what a meme is. I wasn't sure how to describe what a meme is. It was funny because I was watching you talk to him and you're <laughs> like, really? You're being serious? This is a real question that you're asking me as a 26 year old man. <laughs> I thought he was like trying to imitate a meme or be funny and I was like, no, really, you don't know what a meme is? So that was- So wait, what's your what's your favorite meme? My favorite meme, actually, I agree with AJ Terrell. The, okay. the question, that is, I use that all the time. What about you? What's um, do you remember when uh, we were filming in New Year's Eve, it was the New Year's Eve special, and we did the whole Spider-Man point? <laughs> That's my favorite. And I love it. We're bringing it back in week one because it is still a solid yeah. meme. Well, as we roll on here on Rise Up tonight, we can't wait to share the story of our first guest this season, an appropriate start because she brings some serious girl power to our set. That is still to come. Plus, a new face of the franchise for the Falcons is already making an impact in the community. That's coming up next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. Football season is just about to kick off, but the school year is already underway. Though new Falcons quarterback Marcus Mariota has yet to play a snap in the city of Atlanta, he didn't waste any time giving back to his new community. As we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. His Motivate Foundation surprised members of the Westside Falcons Flag Football League at training camp earlier this month, gifting each kid a fancy new backpack and school supplies. The Westside Falcons Flag Football League was founded in 2016 by the Arthur Blank Family Foundation, providing kids from the West Side, West Side of Atlanta an opportunity to play for free. In total, Marcus and the Motivate Foundation gifted over 150 backpacks as the Westside Falcons prepare for their season opener in September really just comes down to just providing resources. I know it's tough, um, you know, coming out of COVID and all that, you know, some of these kids don't even get an opportunity to get backpacks. So to be able to put a backpack together, whether it's, you know, school supplies, you get notebooks, you get pens, you get pencils, um, so that they don't have to worry about those types of things. Um, so we're very happy we were able to do that. Um, it's something that we try to constantly do year in and year out. And, um, you know, proud of what this foundation has done and I'm excited to see what it continues in the future. Still to come here on Rise Up tonight, a new segment this year. Cover your ears and eyes, Arthur Smith, because Tori and I will be bringing you hot takes for the week. Plus, we talk breaking down barriers with Cynthia Deck next on Rise Up tonight. Rise Up tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight. Let's head in the nest with Kelly, Tori, and this week's special guest. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. 
Welcome in the nest, guys. We are so excited to have Santia Deck joining us. She is known as the queen of abs for her <laughs> 885,000 followers on Instagram. It's, you're such an appropriate first guest for us because as the first 30-minute uh, women's sports show that we've got here going on on Rise Up tonight, you are also a trailblazer in the world of women's sports. Thank so we're so very excited to have you. Um, what's been kind of the biggest challenge for you as a female in a male-dominated uh, kind of field? Oh man, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> um, we can relate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say honestly, and I think most female athletes can speak to this, it's just constantly having to prove myself. And definitely being a football player, they're like, no, you don't, you don't play football, it's no way. And I'm like, yes, I really do play. And they're like, show me. And then I show them like, oh, okay, you actually play play. So I think always having to constantly do that. Um, also, honestly, just how hard it is to um, continue to get like people to really pour into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know that tackle exists for women. Um, flag is growing rapidly, but there's still so much more that we can do to even improve that sport. So I think for us, like knowing that most of us are playing for free, you know, we we are fighting, you know, every day to make that, you know, that, that reality, you know, go away. But honestly, that and like I said, every day some guy is like, you don't play. <laughs> There's no way you don't play. There's no way. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because you talk about like, yeah, I, I like play play. Yeah. And not only do you play p play, but y you play for the Atlanta Phoenix and the Women's Football League and you've signed a multi-million dollar contract. And I mean, this is all really amazing stuff and I feel as though you should be really, really proud to be the trailblazer Thank that you, you are. But how did you get your start in football and what's that journey been like for you? Yeah, so um, I come, well first of all, I'm from Texas and everybody knows Texas is like football country. Um, so all of my brothers play football, um, they are running backs as well. So being in that type of environment, I naturally was outside, you know, catching balls, running routes, getting hit, hitting people. Um, so I, I didn't even realize at that time that that was preparing me for this, but um, I was a track runner. So honestly, I wasn't even really thinking about playing football. It wasn't until after college, graduating, and no longer being able to run track, I was like, okay, what do I do now? Like, I still wanna be an athlete, I still wanna be active. And honestly, I was just driving. Driving one day and I saw a flag football tryout sign and I was like, okay, why not? And I went, I had one practice, the coach was like, what the heck? <laughs> How long have you been playing? I'm like, I don't play football. He's like, what? Okay, yeah, so anyways, we're gonna get you on this team and then the rest is history. So literally just driving and I started seeing a sign. She's lived in Atlanta for a while, so obviously you really like it here. I mean, what's kind of kept you here? Oh man, um, everything. Um, first of all, it is hot. <laughs> yes. we all know that. It's a real yes, thing. Yes, it is. You know, but I mean, I love the weather. I, I love that we have, you know, we get to have pretty cool, you know, you know, I guess winters, are, well, actually they are pretty cold. Mm -hmm. We have really cold winters actually, but we get to really have like the summers that I, honestly, I miss Texas sometimes. So I get to kind of take that, you know, I bring that back here, you know, whenever. So that, but also like, just the environment like this is like the home of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of success here um, th anything that you want to be any style anything like we have everything so if you're into you know techno we have that if you're into hip-hop we have country we have everything um, we have the fashion industry is here as well the music industry our sports you know I, I love the I love I love I love Atlanta. So anything that comes with Atlanta, I love. I love our football team, our soccer team, you know, everything like that. But um, you can just feel the love here. I feel like you can really yeah. feel the love. There's a lot of support here, no matter what you're doing. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer when it came to where I was gonna live. But um, yeah, and then the food is good. Yes. Oh, yes. Food is amazing. Yes. And the, yeah, the food is amazing. 100%. <laughs> and something else that we love about Atlanta, it's the home of the Atlanta Falcons. Yes. And this is an Atlanta Falcons show. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you, uh, just do you have any memories of um, either seeing someone or meeting someone or, uh, related to the Atlanta Falcons that you wanted to share? Yes, so I actually have two. So definitely my favorite was meeting Mike Vick. Mm -hmm. And I actually got to meet That's him on two occasions. One, I was actually supporting his uh, his clothing line one time. And then a second time recently was I was um, actually supposed to play in a flag football game with him. And um, he knew that I was supposed to play. So he came over, he was like, man, I really want to play with you. Like, I want to see those moves. I want to throw the ball. And I want to see you catch it and take it <laughs> home. And I was like, oh man, I wish I could do it. But he he's, I didn't even know, but he's, actually a, a fan of what I do 
So knowing that, you know, I have someone that, you know, in his his position that actually looks up to what I'm, not, not look up, but actually supports what I'm doing, it was kind of surreal. And getting to see him in action was actually really cool, too, yeah, because, you know, cool. he's Mike Vick. But, um, yeah, and then the second memory was actually um, – being in a camp with uh, Muhammad Sanu, mm -hmm. Sanu Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad Sanu, Sanu. Yeah. I can never get his name right. <laughs> um, and uh, seeing him in action as well, seeing him supporting women, um, got to see his, his son and everything in action as well. So honestly, um, those are my two memories, but they were both amazing. Love that. Awesome. Very good stuff. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, we'll have the full thing posted on Fox5Atlanta.com. And we'll be right back on Rise Up Tonight. Hey Atlanta, this is Head Crack talking, and you watching Rise Up Tonight, presented by AT and T. It's like I don't get caught up in whatever narrative is after four weeks of the daily narratives. You can almost write some of these narratives and live and die every week by the narratives because it sets up bad, you know, narratives. So you can frame the narrative, you can write narratives. So those are easy narratives and. <laughs> all the narratives, all the hot takes. Coach is certainly going to hate this new segment, but hey, we're having fun That's out right. here. We're going to leave you with a sizzling finish to each episode of Rise Up Tonight this season, giving our hot take for the week. I'm not a betting woman, but I feel like the odds are the Falcons have to get a sack this week. With five quarterback hits last week, it felt like they were so close last week to getting to the quarterback against Detroit. Poor Taquan Graham even had a sack taken away from him after a penalty. So this week, I think like all you hungry Falcons fans out there, I'd really just like to see them hit home against the Jets. No, you're right. Everyone would love to see that. <laughs> everyone. Even the coaching staff, these players, everyone wants to get a, a, get after the quarterback. I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. Now, for me, my hot take, I'm actually going to the other side of the ball. I think we're actually going to see Felipe Franks a little bit more com this coming Monday night. I personally thought that we were going to see him quite a lot. As we know, in training camp, he's been taking a vast majority of his reps at tight end but also sparingly sprinkling in a little bit of quarterback play here and there but we didn't really see him all that much yeah. when they played the uh, when they played Detroit that was something that we really need I really want to see him because here's a guy who's on the bubble to make the 53 man roster and I was a little surprised we didn't see him as much as you know we thought yes. we might see in that first game because the first half you didn't really see him make an impact at tight end mm -hmm. and he's been doing that in training camp every practice but then he didn't play quarterback in that second half so I don't know if some of that was kind of situation trying to see how Desmond Ritter really handled that situation. But this week, has Arthur Smith or really anyone on the coaching staff or what you've seen in practice given you an indication that we will see more of Felipe Franks? Not really. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what's so funny about this is like in training camp, I mean, I'm, we're not making this up. We see Felipe out there all mm -hmm. the time working with the second team, sometimes even the first team. Throw a little sprinkle of that in there, too. But we haven't seen him in a real live game scenario mm -hmm. yet. You have two more preseason games to go. Let's. I want to see what he can do. And Tori mentioned the 53-man cut down is approaching. That's mm -hmm. about two weeks away now at this point. Who is maybe kind of still on that bubble? Yeah, so for me, I really am looking at this wide receiver core. To me, I feel like the locks are Drake London, Brian Edwards, and Alameda Zacchaeus. If you're going to carry five or six wide receivers on this 53-man, that's only a few spots that you can fill up. And there are guys like Kaderil Hodge that we're talking about, Demir Bird, uh, Frank Darby, who Geronimo Allison, Auden Tate. These are all players who have a really good chance to make this roster. And these next two games are going to be so important to deciding who is who is going to make that that group. I know you mentioned Quentin Bell in one of your yes. um, stories earlier this week. He had a great uh, play earlier in practice and you know he's someone else that defensive line group is kind of interesting to see what might happen there. I it's funny because I when I was making my initial 53 man roster projection I wasn't going to carry as many outside linebackers but Quentin Bell has really changed my mind. I'm like, you know what? I could see that he can make – he's a real-life real, real life bubble player. You mm -hmm. talk about bubble players, that is that is who that is, in my opinion, is Quentin Bell. Keep an eye on him in these next two preseason games. We'll see how it shakes out. Thanks for staying up late with us on Rise Up Tonight. See you next week.